Tomo News presents Education Issues in Asia. This maths question from Singapore confuses pretty much everyone. A logical reasoning question for 14 year olds in the Singapore and Asian schools Math Olympiad has gone viral after a TV presenter posted it on Facebook, leaving many people across the globe stumped. The mind boggling question states that two boys, Albert and Bernard, became friends with a girl called Cheryl and wanted to know her birthday. Cheryl gave them 10 possible dates. and then told Albert and Bernard the month and day of her birthday, respectively. The question continues and states that Albert is not sure about her birthday yet, but certain that Bernard, who was told the day, does not know either. From this, it is possible to eliminate the two unique dates, May 19th and June 18th. If Cheryl had told Albert her birthday was in May or June, then these two dates would still be valid. But Albert knows that Bernard does not know her birthday, so this means she must have told Albert that the month is either July or August. Bernard then says he has deducted the answer from the five remaining dates. It is impossible that the date of Cheryl's birthday is 14, because if this were the case, there would be two possible dates, July 14th and August 14th, and Bernard would not be able to ascertain the answer. So only three possible dates, July 16th, August 15th, and August 17th are left. Albert also obtains the answer after these clues. Since he only knows the month of Cheryl's birthday, the answer must be July 16th. If Cheryl had told Albert she was born in August, Albert could not have deducted the answer because there would still be two possible dates. Henry Ong, executive director of the Singapore and Asian Schools Math Olympiad, said the birthday question is a difficult one that aims to sift out the most intelligent students. U.S. beats China in Math Olympiad for the first time in 20 years. U.S.A. 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 In a battle of the world's brightest, no one calculated the U.S. would take home the title of this year's International Mathematical Olympiad in Thailand. The U.S. underdog shocked the Chinese for the first time in over 20 years. The smartest high school math students from around the globe put in countless hours of intense training to prepare for one of the world's most intense international competitions. The Chinese have won top honors 18 times since 1990. It's no secret China and the U.S. have different approaches when it comes to learning math. In China, they start training from an early age, while in the U.S., it's more of a laid-back, go-at-your-own-pace type of system. So how did the U.S. pull out the upset? Simple math. They got an Asian coach and filled the team with Asian kids. And how's China taking the loss? They couldn't be happier. 15 arrested in college test-taking scam. U.S. officials have arrested a group of Chinese nationals who were allegedly involved in a scheme that allowed imposters to take U.S. university entrance exams. U.S. federal prosecutors have discovered a test-taking scam that involved the SATs, the TOEFL exams, and the GRE exams. The scheme reportedly took place between 2011 and 2015, mostly in western Pennsylvania, with suspects using fake passports to allow people other than legitimate test takers to sit for exams. Test takers would help beneficiaries gain better scores, thus helping them obtain student visas and admissions to American universities. The public education director of FairTest says the scheme appears to involve people in China, South Korea, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Those charged could face up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Cheating on the ACT in China is as easy as one, two, three. For Chinese students dreaming of school in the States, it's hard to say no to a program that more or less guarantees your entry into the land of milk and honey. American colleges use entrance exams like the SAT and ACT to assess applicants. 
so to get accepted into a school, acing the exam is paramount, and that means 24-7 test prep. Enter the GAC, or Global Assessment Certificate, which gives you the know-how to pass the ACT test for $10,000 a year. But apparently, Reuters reports some GAC centers give their students more of an edge than others, equipping them with more than just test-taking skills. Prep courses are not the only thing being offered. Despite the ACT's conflict of interest policy, many GAC centers do double duty and administer the test as well. Reuters reports students are sometimes given copies of the exam, or actual exam questions are included in practice tests. This ensures they get high scores, which then boosts the GAC center's reputation. Plagiarism is commonplace in prep classes, and proctors turn a blind eye when blatant cheating takes place during the exam. The ACT, of course, has staunchly denied this, and says it's planning on switching to computer testing in 2017. But as the testing body itself owns and oversees the GAC program, aren't they the ones who ultimately benefit? Tacoma High School to take on 50 Chinese students for $500,000. A Tacoma High School is getting ready to kiss some serious Chinese butt as it welcomes up to 50 Chinese students who will each shell out over $10,000 in tuition for the chance to attend a crappy U.S. public school and boost its falling student numbers. The students will attend Foss High School in Washington State for a full year next fall, after the Tacoma School District decided to sell out to Beijing-based Tower Bridge Group on February 27th. The district and the private Chinese company both say the goal is to promote cultural and educational exchange. But we know the truth. U.S. students will get the chance to introduce their Chinese counterparts to some good old American traditions such as school shootings and teacher-student sex. While the Chinese students hope to teach their new American friends that pissing and shitting in public is way better than using a bathroom. Hopefully, Chinese students will also get the chance to show Americans how to really cheat and bribe your way out of anything. The school claims that the $500,000 will cover the cost of educating the Chinese students who will not receive state, local, or federal dollars to support their education. But as Tacoma usually spends $13,000 per student, we here at Tomo can't help but wonder who's going to cover the shortfall. Second grade pupil spanked by the whole class on orders of teacher. A female teacher at a primary school in Kochi, Japan, asked the whole class to spank a pupil after he turned a deaf ear to her demands. The bullied pupil was enrolled in a special class, but joined a regular class at the end of the school day. When the pupil failed to obey her request, he be seated. She asked the other children to give him a spanking. Most of the pupils playfully stroked and tapped him on the rear, but one pupil reportedly slapped him across the face. When his parents heard what had happened, they complained to the teacher. After she reported the complaint to the school, the case gained national exposure. The school later apologized over the incident and punished the teacher for her inappropriate behavior. The Osaka School Board announced last Thursday that an unlicensed teacher had been teaching social studies in Higashi Osaka Municipal Middle School since 1999. The board admitted that they failed to see through his forged teacher's license, apologizing to pupils, parents and related parties for the problem caused. The man is said to have failed his teacher licensing exams when he was at university in 1993. He dropped out of his course the next year but continued sitting for his license until he finally managed to pass in 1998. Since he didn't have the university degree needed to teach, he copied a friend's papers, changing the name and numbers, and submitted a fake application. The teacher admitted that during the course of his 15-year teaching career, he always feared he would be found out. He said he felt sorry for his pupils for what he had done. The case wasn't brought to light until he had to renew his license. During that process, it was revealed that his registration number didn't belong to him. According to the school, the teacher had a good relationship with his students and was also an advisor to the girls' basketball club. The school board fired the teacher last Thursday. University professor advises students not to be empty. For most students in Taiwan, their time in college is almost entirely spent studying seriously or screwing about and having fun. In an effort to fight this dichotomy, Zhou Wei Han, 
an assistant professor at Taiwan's Furen Catholic University, recently divided students into ten distinct categories in hopes of pushing them toward a path of self-improvement. The 37-year-old educator strongly believes the most common type of student is an empty person. This kind of person isn't very knowledgeable, hardly has any friends, and only attends classes to while away the time. The second most common type of person is one who talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk. According to Joe, these kinds of people are prone to sharing nonsensical, boring things online. Joe also refers to a third major category of people: those who strictly obey their teachers as sheep. Another categorization, surprisingly, includes students who believe they have telepathic abilities. And let's not forget the kind of student who, at the end of the semester, begs the teacher to give them a passing grade. Other types include those who only focus on what they themselves care about, those who only care about how they dress, and those who are, for all intents and purposes, illiterate. His article has attracted over 30,000 Facebook likes in just five days. And many students have left comments, admitted they themselves sadly fall under some of the more ignoble categories.